So uh, originally, we were, uh, for a long time, um, we were just about five chapters. And uh, the way that originated was um, my friend Derek that I had mentioned had hooked up with this guy, Nikki, out of uh, Whittier. And um, we had organized our first meet. Kind of started, Derek and Wes were going to some shows, 04, and there were not a lot of Cadillacs, so they decided to try and see if there's any interest in club. And Derek got on the forums and found a bunch of people. And we had that first meeting, uh, Riverside 2005. And uh, that's where my journey began. And then uh, there were the four of us from that meeting that kind of helped it grow between Wes, Derek, Nikki, myself. And uh, we just kind of went from there. So it's been a fun ride, I'll tell you that. 2006, so at that point, as far as social media is concerned, there was MySpace. And I want to say maybe Facebook was around. It wasn't really popular yet, but during that time around when I joined, like I was really into uh, car photography. That was my hobby. So anytime I went anywhere with my car, without my car, I was the guy with the camera. So this is what I would shoot. I'd shoot my cars, whoever's cars were there. And I primarily only shot like our club. And I was super excited. I posted pictures and this kind of helped build a lot of the momentum once social media just kind of really became the norm. Facebook, Instagram, uh, I would post the majority of the pictures or you know, people would have me take pictures of their cars, they would post them. And that kind of helped build a lot of the momentum uh, just to kind of get the name out there. A few other chapters had formed. We had San Diego, Antelope Valley, um, the OC chapter, the LA chapter and IE. And we stayed like that for probably five years, all just kind of huddled in our own corners, doing our own thing, building our chapters. And then uh, one day I got a call from uh, Corey Adolphus, who was at that time, he was the vice president of uh, the LA chapter. And he starts to tell me that he was getting all kinds of requests from people all over that wanted to start chapters. And uh, the president, at that time, and kind of the guy who had kind of taken the helm as far as um, the main founder was Nikki. He, he had done a lot of the organizing early on. And uh, so he became kind of the, uh, the guy that everyone was looking to, um, asking, you know, to start a chapter. And uh, so Corey called me and he says that uh, Nikki doesn't want to do any more chapters, that, that he kind of wanted to keep it, um, you know, small. I found the club online. Uh, there, uh, it's a single page website. Um, saw a lot of the guys were based out of Southern California, a couple guys based in the Inland Empire, and I figured I'd you know, check out one of their meetings. I went up there, met uh, one of the founders of the club. Uh, seemed like a cool guy. Everybody who was there seemed fine. Everybody was welcoming. So I just kept showing up. And I just never stopped. Like I said, I went to that first meeting well before my car was running. So I was, you know, I met all the minimum requirements, uh, got my car running and just showed up to everything. You know, it was, it, it, it very quickly became more than a hobby. You know, I, I kind of just became, you know, that guy, you know, do you need something? What, what can I do? Where do we need to go? What, you know, and yeah, after about a couple of years of that, um, or actually, sorry, let me backtrack. Within the first year of me being present, being active, being a full-fledged member, uh, some of the Inland Empire guys had brought up uh, the concern of just, you know, making the drive once a month out this way for meetings. You know, that would be, you know, a couple hours here and there. And, you know, they brought up the idea of branching off. You know, everybody who was present kind of discussed it. We voted on it and it went, you know, it seemed like an easy, an easy, I don't want to say split, but an easy maneuver. Uh, shortly after that, within a few months, uh, some of the guys that were coming out were coming out from Orange County and they kind of had the same idea. It's like, well, they got to branch off for their chapter just because of the commute. 
what about out here? And that was greenlit as well. I had been going around, like I said, I had been kind of building my chapter and following guys off the freeway and, and you know, trying to try to build. So to me, um, I, I felt like, you know, the sky's the limit with this club. If more guys want to join, maybe we got to create a process and, and and do that. You know, I didn't see any reason why it needed to be small if, if we had guys who were interested. And so uh, I got with Corey and we called all the rest of the chapter heads, um, which there's three chapter heads uh, per chapter. And uh, we had five chapters at the time. So we decided to have a meeting to kind of discuss this because um, I think we were looking for more of a democracy on, uh, on that uh, subject as far as, as adding more chapters and, and uh, expanding. And uh, I think that Nikki just had different ideas. You know, he came from kind of a low rider culture. So for a little while, they were that, that one chapter branched into three. And the current founder was basically what everything ran through. Like he was, he was running the club. He was facilitating everything. Uh, some of us were being contacted by other random people in regards to joining the club but they don't live close enough to really come out and didn't really have any other answer for them as far as being a part of the club. Uh, we ended up bringing up the idea of expansion to the founder and it kind of didn't really go anywhere. Uh, we ended up at a show, uh, the Moon Eyes show, Christmas party one year, and there was a San Diego chapter of the Cadillac Kings that was in attendance that we didn't know about. So we met those guys, some of the coolest guys ever. They were definitely welcome with open arms, especially after we met them. And from then, we kind of, a few of us chapter heads, was that a chapter head at that point? A few, I was a chapter head by that point. I was, I was a president of the chapter by that point. But a few of us had gotten together and just kind of were basically wondering how we could be surprised with a new chapter and just kind of figured that we should all be involved in, in that type of process. So we coordinated and I helped facilitate our first chapter head meeting where we all sat together at a round table and basically we took control of the club as far as uh, the first set of bylaws and rules and regulations as far as a code of conduct, club etiquette, and basically kind of initiated our thoughts on the process of expansion. We had kind of conducted our meeting and came to the consensus that, you know, we did want to go ahead and expand our club and make it bigger. And uh, so we organized another meeting with him um, in LA, closer to him. And uh, he didn't show up to that meeting as well. So at that point, I kind of got the idea that he sort of just had the idea that we had made up our minds and um, he decided to just, you know, uh, wash his hands of the whole thing is, is my guess. Um, we never really heard from him again, or at least I didn't. Um, that was, there was a little bit of chatter online and then that was kind of it. A email was sent out. Um, they were looking for to fill the position for new ch chapter liaison. Uh, so I applied, and uh, it came to a vote, and here we are. Knowing my passion and my drive towards the club, and wanting to push it in the what I thought was the right right direction by being the one to make sure that only the best and the most dedicated people would be in this club because I cared about it so much it meant a lot to me. Do you have the right passion for the club? Will you do something to bring it to the next level or you know will you fit into the family? 
world domination. There's chat on his phone. Always. You know. <laughs> we started the chapter six years ago, just recently. Um, so what, it's 2021 now, so that puts us back to 2015. Car clubs have always been part of my life in some form or fashion. One of the big issues I've had with car clubs in the past is you get into too much politics and politics can quickly ruin a car club. Um, and it gets, it gets hard to get along with everybody when you keep nitpicking every little tiny thing or in the past, a lot of car clubs have had issues with outside influence. Um, for me, a true car club focuses on the cars, driving the cars, enjoying the cars and being around the people in that same car genre of, of sorts. Um, and for us with the Cadillacs, it all culminates around 1976 and older Cadillacs. Everything from there is all creating friendships and bonds with the people that enjoy the same cars. Um, a family type environment is not always achieved, but that's what you always want. He's been a prospect for five years. He's been a, he's been a prospect longer than he's had a car. Longer, longer than five years. Longer than he's had a car. Longer than five years. So here we go. Fuck yeah. Yeah, put it on sideways before. Prospecting yeah. before the ride even up here. It'll, it can straighten out <laughs> after one year. All right, Chad, grab the other end there. <laughs> and where's that mark? I see it, right? Right there? Yeah. Professionals of what? Let us know if anybody on that side, if it's, if it's clean. Does it look center? Perfect, yeah. Come on, Josh, you're on it. We got plenty of Boom. 
Yeah, we got plenty of swings around. Get your hands out of the way. She got. Look at that. Daniel Lane. I think I called that. It hasn't always been Cadillacs for me. When I started off, I started in the mini truck world. Um, it was mini trucks and airbags and crazy paint jobs. And uh, that grew over time. I guess my taste changed over time as I went on as well. And I got into full-size trucks. Then I got into full-size cars. And then with a couple unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances with my last big body car, I remember saying all I want now is just an old Cadillac. Oh yeah, that's a, that goes back to the childhood. Grandpa used to drive them. I actually was brought home um, from the hospital in a 76 Cadillac, brown on brown, uh, no baby seat, <laughs> which was normal back then. Um, so that's my, you know, from pictures, that's my you know, earliest. And then my grandfather owned car dealerships and that's all he drove was Cadillac. Yeah, the heat, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, our cars, you know, basically go into hibernation from 4th of July to Halloween. You know, I mean, we'll try and pull them out every now and then, you know, and do like a night cruise or something like that. But still at 10, 11 o'clock, it's 115 degrees. I mean, it's insane. The cars don't like it. We don't like it. We don't have AC, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, everybody wants to go to Vegas. Not everybody wants to go to Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I want to, hey, if the weather permits it and you get in a Cadillac and you drive down that strip, when, where can, else can you do that? You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, you know? I'm going to say it's been about five years now. They wanted, a, they wanted to have a national treasure, uh, which meant worldwide. They call it a national treasure. Uh, and at the meeting, uh, like I said, I've been with the club a long time. They know I, I travel, I venture out everywhere. Um, if you wanted this particular meeting there in your office, I would, I would gladly jump in the plane and been there for you. And they saw it uh, feasible for me to be the national treasurer. They voted and they voted me in. And uh, I was very proud of that honor. Very proud. Um, you know, along with that goes a big trust, trust factor, which was over the top honorable um, and I take pride in it um, and we're back on form we're you know like we said about UK and such now we can um, venture out and do different things it can be a no it's not stressful uh, when, when when it's time to collect the annual dues um, it's not really stressful other than sometimes we, we set parameters on the timeline that they got to get their money in so sometimes if, if somebody's in direct contact with me, we just, we work, you know, I got to work with them on certain things. I don't want anybody to get penalized or fined or anything if, if we can avoid it. So I'll work with that and take care of them that way. Uh, and then sometimes there's a chapter that, you know, you just got to work with them. And a couple of times I've talked them in, kind of talked them into just get all the guys together and get, get, get them all to donate some money and, uh, and they, they make it happen. They make it work. Um, but otherwise, it's fun. Otherwise, it's fun. 18 months ago, I petitioned for the chapter, and we've been up and running for uh, for that long. It was probably more like 21 months ago I petitioned because we have a three-month uh, probationary period. So we've been in 18 months now, and uh, it's been great ever since. Um, and so I've been bugging Tim, bugging Tim, hey, if there's ever an opportunity for me to help with this, let me know. If there's ever, ever something I can do to help you, let me know. Um, and I used a lot of my, my political union background that I have. Uh, and Tim reached out and he said, hey, I've, I've got an idea. I've got something I'm working on. Um, you know, I need some help with the newsletter. And I said, man, that'd be great for me. Uh, I would love to do that. I'd love to be a part of that. Put my first newsletter out in December 
of last year. Uh, I'm getting ready to put another one out here coming up in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, and so it just seemed to be a good fit for me. I wanted more. This was a great opportunity for me to, to get into an elected position. And, and a good way for me to help the club outside of managing my own chapter and my personal life and my family and, and you know, my chapter. And then potentially a mailer could come of this. But for me, bigger picture of the newsletter, I want to see a club directory. I want to see a club directory where anybody can get on there and thumb through and reach anybody that they want on phone, via email. Um, just have a good contact base for everybody that's in the club. I feel like that would be really beneficial. It's also going to be really hard to maintain, but it's it's not something that I don't have time for. So I, I, I threw my hat in the ring to do that. I'm working on that directory. We're trying to get a good uh, basis of all the members. And then eventually that could maybe lead out to a, a mass email never works because so many members change their email. Some members are in and out of the club all the time. It's difficult. I think a mailer would be the way to go for everybody to get the communication. But you're exactly right. Um, I love the newsletter. I just don't feel like sometimes I feel like it reaches the chapter heads, but it's not forwarded on to the to the, the rest of the membership. John, what are we going to check out over here, bro? 59 Lamar. You heard? Talk that disrespectful stuff. <laughs> there he goes. Mr. Vinny himself. All the seat pieces, all this shit done now. Oh, man. A lot of people. This ain't like the other one that you had. This one's got everything in it. Yeah. Complete, right? Yep. All wow, look at the headline, huh? The headline and the back is all done. The back piece, you see the, the long piece right there? Yeah. 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 The, for the back one. Yep, the back deck I did. The seats are done. All the seats been done. Yeah, is that the, the last thing that goes in? Yeah, uh, yeah, I started putting these on. Oh, that's nice. Nice, nice. Very um, nice. No, it looks good. Progress. Well, the only th the the thing I have left that I didn't touch is yeah. the wood, and I'm doing that last. Gotcha. I don't want to. I got so many things in pieces right now. Yeah, this thing around around yeah. the seat was like 15 pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Put your life together, you heard? There's another piece here on top. There's more pieces. There's more pieces up here. Look, look at all these pieces. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Right? Right? Ah, it looks good, man. As far as Cadillacs, it goes way back. Like my dad never owned a Cadillac, but my uncle's owned Cadillac, so I always wanted a Cadillac. So. I always been a caddy guy. And then in 2018, 2018, um, I met Chad. It all started over a hat. We was kicking it. And then uh I reached out to the to Wes and them. And 2019, January, it became official Cadillac King of Brooklyn. My uncles, my dad's brothers, they always had caddies. And um, my dad could have had a hundred caddies, but he would that that just wasn't his thing, you know. And then um we always had caddies, like me and my boys. We always, it was always caddies, you know. Everybody was always into other cars and stuff, but my thing always been Cadillacs, you know. So this is actually my first club that I ever got down with, you know. When I seen the movement and then I didn't, I couldn't believe there wasn't a New York chapter. I was like, a Brooklyn chapter? I said, no, I got to jump on that. Right, I, you know, like right away you think, okay, Cadillac Kings, you know, oh, Cali, Vegas, uh, the East Coast, you know, but just to know that, you know, we're in the UK and, you know, we're expanding. We're, we're everywhere, bro. We're expanding. Like, just to think we're worldwide, like, that's amazing, man. I, and, just, you know, like, it's just amazing to see that we're recognized, you know, throughout this, you know, as, as one of the greatest clubs in the world. You know, we I'm good with that, but um, there's going to be a fight to get me off this. You heard I'm the Cadillac King Brooklyn president, and I'm here forever, and that's what it is. Taking over Wawa. Oh. Oh. 
So I'm just saying, they let all the air out of your car. Yeah, man, representing today for sure. We we were actually chasing them guys down from 2013 to 2015 because at the time they were only doing one chapter a year, so we didn't get in actually until 2015, I think, the end, the beginning of 16, and we've been a chapter ever since. Yeah, all my friends growing up were 69 Camaros. So I'm 51, so everybody I went to high school with wanted a Chevelle or a Camaro. And I think it was uh, Scarface came out. We weren't even old enough to go in the movie theater. We, we snuck in the movie theater and watched Scarface. And when he pulled up in that Cadillac with the tiger stripes and was like, a Supreme Puff, that was it for me. That was it. We were part of um, LaSalle, me and Jason, early on before we became kings. And, you know, I, I, I can appreciate um, original Cadillacs, um, but there's just, they just look so much nicer laid out. You know, I, white wall, wide whites. You, 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 there's just nothing like it. On, on our coast here on the East Coast, it's not like it is out there. Like we gotta, we gotta look for guys with Cadillacs that want to join. You know, we're blessed now, 2021, this is our best year. We got seven guys now. That's big for us. The way I see it, it's only going to get bigger. The more, I mean, you look on Instagram and you type in Cadillac Kings and it's like, I mean, you got 30, 40, 50 pages you can look at. If even now you think about 38 chapters trying to make the all chapter barbecue. And you got people, Kevin and them guys out in UK and Australia and, you know, and I can tell you this much. It's only a matter of time before Japan wants to rock this symbol. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's possible we could get too big. It's very possible. Tried to make me mellow And I'll admit that I'm a different man But I still love the bars, man And I still play guitar But I'm trying now to do the best I can Yeah, I can hear them calling for some Jimmy I already got the encore in my head And I don't think at all about the writing on the wall Or that woman waiting
2002, I got it going, but it had no windshield. Okay. And um, uh, so I went to Home Depot and I bought a piece of plexiglass yeah, and yeah, stuck it in it. there. And, and, and I had the gap here because I couldn't curve it all the way around. Right. And, and every time you drove it, it would sort of bend in. <laughs> so I drove it like that for about two years. Yeah. And I took it in to get uh, some guy to do some work on. So he did this quarter panel. Yeah. Did a really nice job on it. He was going to do both of them for me. When I got back to the shop, he phones me up and he says, I need another two grand to finish it off. But he had already cut the quarter panel off. Oh shit. And I'm like, you told me two grand for both sides. Now you're doubling it. Yeah. So screw you. And I feel I felt I was getting ripped off. So I took the car away with one quarter panel on and no quarter panel. Driving down the road, there's freaking no quarter panel on the car. Oh, shit. And I got a plexiglass window yeah. that's curving in. Yeah. So eventually I got home. My friend just bought a new hot water tank and he had enough cardboard for me to make a quarter panel. Nice. And I duct taped the quarter panel on. <laughs> Got the similar color paint just before it was painted yeah. and rolled it on and matched it. Nice, bro. I'm always lost. President of the Cadillac Kings. Uh, that's bad, and, but uh, BC. I don't have this issue. Not that bad. Ooh. No, no, yeah. no, it's horrible. No, and then he left it. And then he stopped paying the cash. Put a seal on it. Yeah, yeah. Put a seal code and then shot it, right? have now been infected by coronavirus worldwide. <laughs> closures of our city's bars and nightclubs. We have about six days uh, of ventilators in our stockpile. The border between Canada and the U.S. closes to all non-essential travel. 
we're encouraging people to stay home. Thursday morning, the Elysee Palace announced the French president tested positive for COVID-19. 13 people have died from the virus. Just stayed away, just kept, excuse me, kept in contact with texts and stuff. And I posted some shows that popped up, but nobody really like wanted to get out or they did their own thing, you know, and. That's it. So we were down about a year. We didn't really do much. So besides uh, the individual stuff. It's pretty easy going. Like uh, I know the Sydney chapter is going through a hard time. Um, so Sydney's about 10 hours drive from, from here. So um, I shot down to a car show in Sydney and caught up with a couple of the guys when I was down there. And... Um, a few months back. So they're, Sydney's still in current lockdown. Uh, they can't travel into state. They can't travel out of, you know, like uh, about five miles out of there um, from where their house is. So, you know, they can't really go that far. And then also one of the guys from Sydney was up here in Queensland for a large show that we have on the Gold Coast down at Cool and Gatter. And um, yeah, I caught up with Barry there and we had a bit of a bit of a chin wag and, and what's happening down in the other chapters and just had a bit of a chat, yeah. And I'll go shoot down to Melbourne in, in probably a few months, so I'll catch up with a couple of the guys that are in the Melbourne chapter as well. So the first thing I, I want to say and give a shout out to my guys, we we stay connected through Messenger, and there was over communication when somebody wasn't feeling well. Make sure you know, make sure if they need anything, they need food, money, help, you know. What, whatever we we had a good group going on and, and a bunch of the guys stepped up through that um the whole covid thing um it's it came through we all know the midwest was a little slow um on some of that adopting so we had a little more time with each other before it started things started shutting down and then, you know, we just kind of agreed that, hey, we're going to have to kind of take a sabbatical, guys. It's um, it, we, we stay active with each other on Facebook and we stay active through Messenger. But it's it wasn't like, you know, we could meet up and go do things. Um, the city of Tulsa backed off its mask mandate and kind of opened up uh, there for a while. Um, and so we had we had a chapter meeting and we were able to do a car show uh, early this year. Um, actually, I think we got a couple of car shows in this year. Um, and everybody kind of felt felt comfortable with that because it's outside. We could space ourselves, you know, just just chatter because you could tell people have been locked up and they didn't know what to do. And they had so many stories. And so it was it was hysterical to sit around in those groups and just let everybody just kind of show up and throw up what's been going on the last eight months. Well, I always try and keep in touch with all the guys anyway, uh, through messenger and phoning them up and stuff. Um, and we're quite, there's only 24 members of the UK and they're all kind of, we all hand pick each other. So we all, we're all good guys and we all know each other really, really well. And, um, you know, it's just a case of just keeping in contact with, with, with everyone. Obviously, we couldn't meet anybody, um, but we certainly, you know, kept in touch verbally. And um, we, we kind of, we're a bit different to the normal car clubs that we have in the UK because they have like 300 members who you never, ever see, never, ever meet don't know what they drive or what their name is. Um, and I dare say that they just fell apart and stuff, whereas we just probably glued together a bit more, really. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, if anyone was in trouble, we would, we, we help each other out, you know. We uh, we are a real family. That sounds really corny, but yeah. that's how we are. And um, we, we got through it, and the first chance we got to have a meet, we we did that with um, one of our other members who can't be here today, but um, and and now we've pulled this one off with Phil Barry, and um, 
yeah, we're we're back with a vengeance. I didn't. I was at no point where I could fall apart because, as Kev said, we're all like we're mates more, like we like we're family more than it's not just about the cars for us. So, I mean, I don't think there's a day goes by that we're not in contact with yeah. each other. Um, we've got like a group messaging and stuff. So, yeah, there's constant conversations going on between everyone. Um, I was gutted when it happened, partly because. I got my car on the road about two weeks after lockdown came in. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it arrived. I mean, it took, what, six, seven, eight months for me because I bought it in California as well, brought it over, uh, thanks to Kev and Dolores, actually, on, on that. Um, and, yeah, it arrived, literally. Lockdown came in here March 23rd, and I got it on my... Uh, I got it on the end of March. And so I was gutting not being able to take it anywhere, but just having it, doing work on it and keeping in touch with the guys and girls was was kept, kept me going, at least. I mean... Lockdown was hard, real hard. Euh, et ben, le Covid a ébranlé la planète entière. Et euh, bon, ben, la France n'a pas été euh, ignorée. Euh, au sein du club, c'est sûr que euh, tout s'est arrêté. Il y avait des projets en cours, euh, petits projets. Mais le Covid a tout mis à l'arrêt. Et encore aujourd'hui, il y a beaucoup de problèmes. Il y a beaucoup de restrictions. Euh, pour l'instant, on ne peut pas envisager euh, un, des nouveaux projets. Il y avait des réunions de voitures encore américaines euh, de prévues en France. Mais elles ont toutes été annulées. Jusqu'à quand Nous ne le savons pas. I really thought that... Um, when, when COVID, you know, back in March or last year, um, I was talking to my wife, I was like, you know, this could be the end, you know, you know, that, that one thing that we all have in common, you know, you can't do anymore. And, but actually it turned out to be the opposite. I think we got, actually, we grew last year and we actually growing more this year. And I think it's, you know, besides, you know, a good friend of mine passing away, you know, it really helped, you know. It was hard because, you know, there's, you know, we, as a, as a, as all chapters and from all over the world, you know, that people have different ideas and political and all of that, you know. It was hard because, you know, people have the different perspective, you know. When we used to go to car shows, he would drive the 55. Oh, you know, then I will go with my wife. She will go with me in, in a 63. He was like the ordinary car, you know, car member. You know, that, so people being against, I don't know, it was it was hard, but he went with us to the old chapter car, you know, a barbecue in, in Vegas. He, a member of the chapter? he was not a member. He, he didn't have his own vehicle, but, you know, and to us, him and his, and his family were, were our family, you know. I know his, his kids were two years old. So when we used to go to car shows, he would drive the 55 with his son, you know? And then he drove the 55 to Vegas. And then my wife was with me in my 63. So everybody knew him, you know? So I took it personal from people who didn't take it serious, COVID. But I also, I was not vocal against that because people have different point of views, you know? Because there's no way I can, I can you know, enforce and my view, you know, into somebody else. It's just not going to happen. You know, that's not, my, that, that's not my role. Since I was a kid and then I never thought I could afford one and then always wanted the vintage one. And then they're tougher to find in Canada, obviously, than they are in California. But yeah, they were, um, what do you call it? I would say I've been in them since I was a kid. And then now owning three of them, I think my dreams have came true. Um, yeah, we, we, how would I write it? How would I put it? I would say we ended up getting our cars into the Cadillac dealership in the Wolf Cadillac in Edmonton here, which is our Canada dealership. Uh, we had all our vintage cars in there for a photo shoot inside the dealership. So it made it look like it was 1960 all over again. So most, most people, if any in the club, I don't think have had that opportunity. So it got us some pretty worldwide publicity that that had happened because Cadillac's pretty tight with the rulings and what they're allowed. 
for their dealerships. So yeah, we had that. And then I think moment wise, like it was just me and, and my buddy Trent who thought maybe we could get this thing going and never in a million years did we think we'd have 12 guys in the chapter, let alone people reaching out to me and for British Columbia or Nova Scotia, or um, we got members in Saskatchewan now, Winnipeg. So a couple more provinces and that pretty well went right across the board. So yeah, it's, it's amazing how many people know about the Kings. And then once they find out one is here, like they have a chapter in Edmonton or even in Canada or Alberta, yeah, everybody wants in or they're super stoked. And they said they've been following California guys for years. The problem is with Canada to the States is the Cadillacs aren't readily available like they are. Like, you know, like if you got 40 or 50 guys per chapter in California, there may be only 200 Cadillacs left in Canada across the province that are worth saving or that people have, right? So, and you got to find them without rust. They're going to have rust because of all the salt stuff up here in the winter months if they were driven through that, which they would have been in the 60s, 70s, and 80s probably. So, yeah, I my goal is to go right to get it right across. I mean, other than Toronto, other than Ontario and um, Quebec right now, we're almost there. Cat, I would think we're playing a smidge of catch up, and then we're right where we need to be, I would say. Um, I think we're all trying to navigate the unknown waters of the new world now to an extent. So, yeah, I think, I think, I don't I'm not saying we got too big, too fast. I'm just thinking we're trying to make sure it's a fit for everybody type thing. You know what I mean? Like we're trying to make sure everybody's knows where they're at and where they should be at or where they need to get to type thing is what is my thoughts on that. Nice. Take your hat off. So everybody thinks we're twins. You know, I was born December 17. He was born January 17. So crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many times we walk up and they're like, oh, my God, you guys are twins. And we, we just go with it right now. Like, yeah, yeah, we're twins. I would say probably last year when uh, we went to a Slam Fest car show up in uh, Tampa and uh, one of our members showed up and um, he, he, it wouldn't even turn on coming out of the, the trailer. So. Um, you know, of course, me and Roland, we're, we're, we're very handy work with mechanics. So, I mean, we jumped in there. We started working on pulling the belts, pulling um, pulling the parts out. And uh, honestly, I think half the chapter was all in there together. Uh, it was a great year. I think last year uh, was probably one of our best car shows where we all got together and we all worked together. And, and we just had a great time at that car show. Yeah, yeah I agree. I also, to add to, uh, to get it together, to Angel's point, one of the biggest I've been in a lot of car clubs and mini truck and ski and all that since I was little, but one of the biggest differentiators with Cadillac Kings is that it's not a judgmental thing, it's not a competitive thing. We all have the common love for the classic Cadillac, not who's is better, who's is more expensive. And on top of that, Cadillacs are one of the few vehicles that I, in my opinion, that all walks of life uh, can, can relate to. Yeah. And to take it one step further, the people that we've met along the way, the opportunities that's given us, the friends that we've made, the cars that we've seen, the connections, everything and anything, even the leadership from West and the Vegas guys and everyone else from Cali and New York, everywhere. It has been crazy, crazy, amazing. And, and it's been a blessing. So to answer the question, I will never leave Cadillac Kings. If anything, I want to grow even further with them and see what we can be, make out of it. Yeah, I'm one of the few women that are in the club, and I'm very humbled that I was accepted, you know, because I, uh, you know, wanted to get in another car club prior to this, and they wouldn't let any women in. And I'm a real good, I'm a real big car fan. So, you know, that kind of hurt my feelings, but I'm okay. Um, and so when they left me, let me come in with them, being dominating male club, it was an honor. It was a true honor. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. I don't think that's an issue. I don't I don't believe that that would be an issue for the Cadillac Kings at all. Um, I know that there's uh, other women, I'm sure, that want to come to the club and they would be welcomed with open arms. Um, I got there's a new member, a fairly new member that I just recently met, you know, and uh, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to know that there's more women coming into the club. I know there are a lot of women in the car culture, but in our club, like I said, it's it's minimal numbers. So, um, but uh, there's a lot of chicks out there that do have rides, 
You know what I mean? And I just hope more and more, you know, move into the car culture. I just wish that a lot more women would get into it, you know. And I fly solo a lot. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. So, you know, going home was a pretty big deal for me. Um, I hadn't been home in five, maybe five or six years. And so um, on my arrival home, as soon as I hit California, the first thing I did was I got to go to a Cadillac um, Cadillac Kings, excuse me, I got to go to a Cadillac Kings club meeting. And, uh, and that was with the IE. So I met some of the guys in the IE. Um, I met Eric and, you know, lots some of Los Angeles and stuff like that. And, um, and it was fantastic. The first person who pulled in, I'll never forget it was Dolores. And so I was recording. And as soon as I seen her pull around, you know, I immediately looked at my, on my husband and I screamed. I was like, Oh my gosh, it's another girl, you know? And, um, she hopped out of the car, like she had known me forever. And, um, you know, like gave me a hug and took pictures with me and stuff. And, and I think it was a really great time. I met some really cool people on that trip and it solidified why I joined this club in the first place. I freaking love it. I love when I come across other girls and they're like, yeah, I'm in the club, you know, or whatever, or I want to be a part of this or whatever, because that's what it's all about. If a female has 10,000 male followers, okay, that's great. You know, sometimes you feel like they always want something from you, but if another female has 10,000 female followers, then you kind of feel like, you know, you're giving them something to look up to. And I'm 42. I'm like an old lady now. And, uh, my hope and my goal when I go to these shows and stuff is that some 20 year old girl or some 18 year old girl or 13 year old girl, you know, comes up to me and she's like, Oh my gosh, I want to drive a car just like yours when I grow up or whatever it is. And they're not only just seeing my car, but they're seeing my character and they're seeing the character of, you know, the people that I'm hanging out with and they want more of that and they want to be like that. And then next thing you know, you know, they're 16 and they're driving and like my daughter, they want their first cars to be like a 1961 Cadillac or something like that. That's my, you know, that's what I love about being a female in the scene. You know, there's a lot of the guys in the club that I can go to just like I can go to any woman and talk to them about problems that I have and, or call their wives. Their wives don't even know me. And I could pick up the phone and call their wife and say, Hey, it's Tony Marie. I, you don't know me, but, and they'll come back and respond and say, Oh my gosh, I know who you are. You know, let's chit chat. Let's hang out. And I love that. You know, I'm not, I'm not like an over, I don't want to use the word, like I'm not an over feminist or anything like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, create everything in such a way that it's chaotic, but I do want girls to be able to, you know, step in here and not feel intimidated. There's nothing to be intimidated by. It's quite normal for me. Um, my family going back to 1900 and something started with a bike, push bike shop, went to a motorbike shop. My dad had a motorbike shop and I grew up in the garage. So I've always been around motorbikes and cars and basically men. Um, oh, yeah, we'll keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's quite normal, really. I think they accept me, although some of them are frightened of me, apparently, um, over here. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but I do tend to keep everyone in order if I can. But no, it's, it's fine. Um, they, I think they forget I'm a girl most of the time. Um, and the same over when we've been over to the States. I've been over now four years probably have we been over with the, yeah. with the Kings. Yeah. I met some of the um, Dolores, real good friends with Dolores. Um, met them all there then and they, you know, they all just treat you as, as the same really, as an equal. We've only had two guys in the chapter when I took over. So since I've taken over the club. Your chapter of the club. Yes, and we built it up to 11 members, and which I think is great. No, there isn't. You know, I treat myself, of course I am the president in San Diego, but I consider myself as a member like anybody else. We're all one. Yes, I do make choices, but I also ask other members their inputs. What can we do? How can we better the chapter? Let's work on it. Let's get together and form a better chapter. And, you know, and I'm just like a member like anybody else. Yeah, I knew that. I knew before I joined. I joined. How I joined, I was at work and I seen some guys, some um, a construction worker, construction foreman. We were up in Long Beach and I um, <clears throat> passed by a couple of plumbers. They were showing pictures of old Cadillacs. And I was like, you know, being nosy, I was like, man, what you guys know about Cadillacs, blah, blah, blah. And so <clears throat> they said, oh, we got to, you know, we're in a club, Cadillacs Kings, you got to have a 1975 or 76 or older. I was like, man, I always wanted one of those. You know, I said, um, 
how many members? You know, I said, oh, it's about seven, eight of us right now. You know, I said, I'd like to join. I said, find me a Cadillac. I didn't have one first at the time. And I said, find me one. I want a 1970 or a 69 convertible. Like three, two weeks later, they showed me a couple of green, black ones. I said, nah, I don't want that. Then they showed me the red one that I have now. I bought it and became a um, prospect and a member. And, uh, but, you know, as far as all us getting along and the camaraderie against the different nationalities is great in my, in my chapter. You know, and I feel like as I look on Facebook and around the nation, even overseas, I see that, you know, everybody's diverse. All chapters, all clubs, the club is diverse. And so I think we're ahead of the ball on that part of society.
So the wheelhouse, um, it's kind of a support group, I guess. It, it's, uh, it kind of is what it is, what, what, what it is in the title, which is just, it, it's a group that nobody really knows about. And it's a group of guys in the club that, um, first of all, Tim Johnson, he, he's out of uh, Las Vegas. And that guy has been an absolute support system for me. There, there were times during our development where um, I was just frustrated. I was just kind of, I don't want to say I was over it, but I, I was definitely um, feeling the stress of development with our club. It's not just a little car club. It's not just, oh, hey, we have, you know, you know, a few chapters and we just need somebody to help oversee them all. No, this is, we're 37 chapters big with more in the, waiting in the wings, we're waiting on their turn to earn that crown. With the wheelhouse is how me and Wes would become, we started talking about things. He was burned out, but I was anxious. I was ambitious. I had that fire in me that he had at one time. And it just seemed like it was constant work for him. And it's just like anything. It, your favorite hobby will always be your hobby until it becomes work. I was approached by Jason out of Denver saying, hey, there's a couple wishy-washy things with the bylaws who wrote them. I admittedly said, I revised them and these were what were voted on. And he said, well, there's some gray areas. And I don't think some of these gray areas can leave for some ugliness. So he wanted to help kind of tighten that up. We try to handle small issues um, to either keep them from going to committee or try to handle them at our level. It's it's uh, think of it like a a a, a peer uh, a peer thing. We try to handle it amongst ourselves. That's what our wheelhouse is. And then if it has to go outside of our wheelhouse, then we take it to the big stuff goes to committee. You know, with my union leadership and and like I said, the, my ability to put organization to chaos and a uh, level head that I have and, and looking at things from a very diplomatic perspective, it just seemed to be a good fit. And, and back then it was just us five. We didn't call it the wheelhouse back then. It was it was just us five. And, and you know, we and that's part of the group text, you know, and it has evolved into this. We try to take care of small issues to keep them off a of committee's plate when it came into the new chapter stuff, hey, you know, with new chapters, it says X, Y, Z in the bylaws. Hey, let, let's bring Eric in. Eric, Eric can help out with this. And one thing led to another, and then it turned into, um, we had an international question. Well, hey, let's get a hold of Ryan up in Canada. Let's bring him into this. Five of us in the wheelhouse are pretty invested in this club. And I think it's, for me, you know, we all don't get along all the time, but we agree to disagree a lot as grown men and adults move forward on certain topics. But it's just, I think we're more invested in the committee sometimes, you know, because everyone's got lives and everyone's busy. And, you know, and I think we're just trying to get the, the club going in the right direction, I think, right? That's yeah. my thought process on it. Some guys aren't involved, you know, as much as others. And that's where I struggle some days where I'm 100% involved. Others, you know, 30% involved, whether that's in my chapter or just the club in general. Next thing you know, it turns into this group that we talk almost daily about, hey, so we have, you know, we have this new chapter and they're running into this issue. Do, who can help them order shirts or who can help get them the logos they need and those type of things. And so we just kind of help with that. The wheelhouse doesn't influence the committee because the committee is the end all be all. Right. Yeah. So the, like the committee is basically like the enforcer, whereas the wheelhouse, um, we're kind of a think tank and the developing ideas for, you know, whatever it is that, um, needs development, you know, the, the thought process behind things and, and how to do things. Um, that's kind of where the wheelhouse comes in to, to clarify with the wheelhouse, as far as like how that goes with committee, um, the wheelhouse has absolutely no authority on anything. The wheelhouse just helps keep the ball rolling. If things need to go to committee, they go to committee. Um, you know, but if we can, if we can filter it um, or dissolve it before it has to go to committee on everything, because at the end of the day, we don't want to be dictators. We don't want to be rulers. That's not how this is supposed to work. The, the committee is there to help make 
the hard decisions when it comes down to it. A lot of decisions aren't that hard. A lot of decisions just need some common sense and a little bit of thought. So when it comes down to some of this stuff, all that's all we do. We just make those decisions. We we just kind of, again, don't make any authority decisions on anything. We All we're just trying to do is just kind of help keep that ball rolling on, an, on a more individual, more personal basis. Um, the committee itself has usually has really hard decisions to make. And those decisions are ones that a lot of guys don't want to have on their shoulders. I mean, you, you, in a lot of cases, it doesn't happen bad, but in some cases you are the bad guy. The committee, um, has been because of the actions of some of the wheelhouse and, um, the development and the way that our bylaws have come together. Uh, the committee hasn't had to do a whole lot of hardcore enforcing in the last years. It's been, we've been very drama free and, um, I think a lot of that is due to, you know, the think tank that's that's the wheelhouse and uh, making the bylaws very clear and and just being through the stages of growth that we have. I mean, we're 16, 17 years into this now, so we uh, we've gone through our growing pains and, and now is kind of a time where uh, we just can all enjoy it and not really have to deal with, you know, a whole lot of drama. It's a, it's an extracurricular thing for most people. It's it's fun. It's taking your Cadillac out on the weekends. Find the car, then ask Kev. Well, basically, you buy your car from California. Um, you then have to get it shipped to the, the docks. You can't drive it yourself because, as a tourist in the country, we're only allowed to drive your hire vehicles. So we have to pay a shipper to get it from the, the seller to the shipping agent. Um, that has to go, uh, the VIN number has got to be checked, uh, it's got to marry up with the title, you need a bill of sale, um, and then onto the boat, six, six weeks later, it arrives in the UK, uh, we then are allowed to drive it from the docks to a MOT testing station. Um, all, every, every car in the UK has got to have an MOT test. Um, so into the MOT testing station, and um, everything's got to be checked, everything's got to be working, all the lights, the brakes, uh, no rust. Um, yeah, and then um, basically send all the documentation off once that's been cleared through our customs system. Um, and then wait for, I don't know, four, five, six weeks for the paperwork to come to allow you to get a license plate and off we go you know it's quite a quite a drawn out process and it costs about 1750 quid yeah two and a half thousand dollars to get a caddy from a to b and pay our customs at this end hey, I, I bought my 65 pre cadillac kings um it's okay if you know someone in the states and maybe someone can look at the car or but I was just going completely blind. I found it on Craigslist, which we don't have in the UK. Um, I heard all sorts of stories about Craigslist. So I got in touch with the guy and phone calls and pictures and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, you just got to go with your gut and wing it. And I ended up sending the money to the guy and I could have been shafted, but so luck would have it. The car arrived, it was great. And it, it did go smoothly, but it can be a bit scary. Yeah, for, for me with my 66, I, Dolores really helped out. So she come and she met the car, she checked it over. So I sent the money to Dolores and she only sent the money to the seller once she checked it and was happy with it. So yeah, again, the king being a king there helped. Well, I wouldn't have had the car if I wasn't a king because Kev told me about it and then Dolores sorted it out US side for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <true. laughs> 
Hang on, ready? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> When our year was up to get plaques, um, they made a run of plaques and it was 25 plaques. And, you know, we're a large club down here. I mean, just to have been started, we got a good bit of people. And there was three of us that were able to get plaques. So, you know, I told Tim, I said, hey, man, I want four of them plaques. Because if you see me, like I got two plaques in every car before I ever made them. <laughs> it's just kind of how I roll. But so he said, um, yeah, I'll ship you four out. Well, that was four out of the 25. And I mean, for six or eight months after those were gone, they were uh, not being able to make anymore. And people were on the, the page, you know, saying, hey, man, we need some plaques. And, you know, I messaged him and I said, hey, man, you know, I can take care of them plaques for you because I have plasma tables and, you know, all my stuff and everything. And uh, he said, Nah, we're good. We're going to make another, uh, you know, another run soon. So I said, well, let me go ahead and prepay you for four more. <laughs> and uh, and then I started contacting the other guy that was making the the one piece molded plaques. And I told him, you know, I need four of those, too. And uh, I'm, I'm still trying to get a hold of that, those molds. And, you know, maybe because they're still not being made. And, um, you know, I messaged him again. And I think he had some stuff going on, like, you know, maybe moving and, and his house, buying a house, stuff like that. And he was like, man, you just became my lifesaver if you can make these plaques. And this was like a year after I had just been messaging and messaging about making them. And he said, uh, I'll tell you what, man, just go ahead and make one. Let's see what you can do. And I was like, all right, well, send me the file. And he was like, well, there is no file. So... <laughs> Yeah, so I uh, I worked on that plaque for probably three or four weeks to get the file, the CAD file and the cut files right and everything. And then I made a few, sent them out there for them to look at. And they were like, man, you're golden. So um, just been pushing them from there, you know. So, you know, I take a 316th plate still. Um, I have a CAD file with a pro boss table. And I... Uh, program everything in and I cut out, I can cut 10 out at one time and then I have to clean up the edges and which the other company that was making them, I forget, I think it was Bill, maybe Bill Brennan, one of the guys out of Cali, when he got my plaques, he was like, dude, these things are awesome. He says, they're cleaned up. They're ready to powder coat. Like they're smooth, uh, no rough edges. But after that, then I take and put them in the drill press and I have to drill them because they, they have a bolt that goes in them and you have to bolt them together so i drill them out with a drill press and then i clench these self-clenching studs in them on the front piece and then that's what the back piece connects to that's the cost it's 125 for a plaque which is the same price that um they were selling them for two years ago which is kind of amazing that i kept it at you know 125 considering the price of everything's went up a hundred percent
I think what held the Cadillac Kings together for so long was the kind of people that we let into our club. Um, they did become friends and family, obviously, but there was also the passion of Cadillacs. Um, Cadillac is an acquired taste, you know, it is. And to meet fellow people that are into the same thing as you, um, you just kind of hold on to those people because it's a rarity, you know. So <clears throat> I would say, obviously, besides, you know, becoming family and whatnot, it's the passion of the car, you know, the help of the car. Um, there's always members willing to help, answer questions, you know. So I think that was, that's a, a pretty tight bond for the Cadillac Kings. One word, huh? Hmm. Passion. So the the nice thing about these Cadillacs, uh, uh, these cars in general, is they uh, they're used as a measuring stick for all things in life. You know, it's the Cadillac model of this, the Cadillac model of that. It represents quality, and and pride. And um, we we recognize that. It's what bonds us as a club. And um, like I said before, a lot of these things you can't get on Google very easily, at least. And it's up to these guys who retain the knowledge and are willing to pass that on to the next generation um, to enjoy the car, to enjoy the, the culture. Yeah, it's not over. It's not, we're not done yet. Um, I would just say, you know, continuing down the same path like the same amount of growth and, you know, I, I just can only hope that some of the expansion that we've had internationally or at least, you know, across the U.S. in these different states, hopefully that snowballs into multiple chapters in each of those states, you know, so, you know, that organic growth of, you know, this solid group of people meets up with some other people that end up branching out just like the initial Inland Empire and Orange County split from LA County. You know, hopefully it just kind of follows suit. Obviously harder in some areas because, you know, you can't, you know, there may not be a serious car culture in certain states or certain parts of the US. But yeah, I mean, similar growth, continued growth. It's mind boggling actually to see from the origins and when we first started to, and I know I said it to uh, a few other people before, uh, when we had expanded to three chapters, when Orange County had branched off, that was so exciting to me personally. And to be close to 40 chapters now on close to seven different continents, that's, that's pretty amazing. And it's, it's uh, when people ask me, as the same question. It's like, por vida, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in it for life. Carnalismo. Oh, yeah. And my boys, uh, they fight over <laughs> who's going to sit in the front seat and to events. They always want to come. My son's downstairs right now, so, I mean, they can't stay away. They, they're still fighting over who's going to get my car. I think if there's someone out there with a classic Cadillac that wants to be in the club, I think we should be open to as many chapters as we can get. I mean, it's just, at this point, it, there, it's just a number. I mean, we see each other on Facebook and Instagram and we're able to connect with people around the world, you know? So it's just that many more people who wanna be able to take pride in their Cadillac and wanna join, a, join the club, you know? That's, that's the main thing is trying to find people in the same general area, especially when it starts getting overseas and it's harder to get, you know, three Cadillacs within a hundred miles of each other. I like the fact I, I, I had people reach out to me from different states and they're like, what do I have to do? You know, I think that's a good thing because it's, it's, uh, it's people that, uh, that are, reaching out to be a part of something. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible for the fact that, that where this club was and where it's become. You know, people, uh, they'll reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram and, and they'll see some of my builds and, and they're like, hey, w what would I have to do to be, 
I, I think that's the, the cool part that just like me, you know, when Chad, I was like, what do I got to do to be a part of Las Vegas Cadillac Kings? You know what I mean is I had, I had people from Florida, from Kentucky, stuff like that going, what do I, what do I got to do to be a part of Salt Lake City Cadillac Kings? You know, that, that is, uh, that's pretty, pretty cool. You know, uh, I, I definitely don't, I don't see the club getting smaller because you have a, a generation growing. I think that, that you're going to have lots of these young guys that they kind of go, okay, well, I've had these types of cars. I want to get into a classic car. And I think that's a good thing. Um, the club as a whole, I think, you know, to build the community that they've built over the last 15 plus years and to have people that have reached out to me personally when we first joined, to be able to reach out to somebody on Facebook and ask a question that somebody's had maybe the same issue with their car or whatever, and to get a response or to have somebody ship you a part that might be next to impossible to find because they have it. That's great. That's an awesome thing. So, you know, it's, it's the community. It's being, you know, having that community to, you know, to rely on, you know, to get together. Super pumped for the barbecue. Hopefully it'll happen this next year. And that way get to put a lot of actual faces with names and videos that you see online and stuff. So, I think at this point, it's hard to say that you've never heard of the Cadillac Kings. I mean, you put it in on YouTube, the videos you did 10 years ago have a hundred thousand views on it, you know, and it's, it's something, if you Google it, it's, you know, on the top, I'm going to say family. I mean, it's, uh, it sucks. You only give me one word cause I could rattle off for a while. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. But, you know, the extension of, of our Cadillac family and um, meeting all these people all over the world and, and developing friendships with them and, uh, you know, now seeing them at barbecues and, and different stuff. And um, so, yeah. Cars go. Yeah, he's he's 10 years old now. He's here with me today. Um, he's a low rider freak and he's also uh super into drift cars and all that stuff. So I have high hopes for him um, with Cadillacs, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> so buddy. <laughs> mm. Awesome. I'm saying no. Awesome dude. I couldn't even tell you how this shit all started. But I do remember growing up as a kid, seeing my uncles driving in the old school caddies. Driving in my caddy and I'm cruising real slow. Top down, music loud, suspension low. I'm a Cadillac King, in case you didn't know. Gonna rep it till I die, and that's for sure. My Cadillac clean and the top go back. Repping Cadillac Kings and that's a fact Cruising through the hood like homie was good Please don't get it misunderstood Riding through the block, suspension low on pimping, man, pimping, man Everybody know how a Caddy King rolls is different, man, it's different, man Butter soft leather, white walls on the shoes Nothing feel better when you're repping with your crew Got dice on the mirror, some cool by chance, do you have a larger neck microphone laying around? Something that maybe just will fill up this entire area. And I'm out. We talked about the Florida chapter. I, I sent out a picture of a Cadillac that was covered, covered in alligator skin.